It's Wednesday, Wednesday, May 16th, 2018. Welcome to Raging Chicken Special Edition Out to Coop Podcast. This is Kevin Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. Each week, I talk to our capital muckraker in chief, Sean Kitchen, about the good, the bad, and the ugly in state and national politics. We're doing a little different this week, folks. I got to go out of town for the weekend, going to Chi Town, Chi Town. So uh, Sean and I decided to do this on Wednesday, and uh, it's kind of a good day to do it. Yesterday was the PA primaries, and holy moly, when we come back to you next week, we will have, uh, we'll do a more full recap on some of the other news, I mean, the craziest stuff that's going on in Israel and Palestine, uh, more chaos in the Trump world, um, but today's focus is going to be really solely on the PA primaries, um, um, this really historic PA primaries, and we'll get to that in just a momento. I want to remind everybody, tune into the Rick Smith Show on Free Speech TV this and every Saturday at 7 p.m. You can stream the show live at freespeech.org. You can also tune in on the Dish Network, DirecTV, or through the Free Speech TV app on Roku. If you missed the show, go to ricksmithshow.com and click on the Free Speech TV icon in the sidebar, or just go to freespeech.org and check the archives out. Once again, uh, today feels like the kind of day that you want to say thank you to everyone who has supported Raging Chicken Press over the years. Uh, we got some donations last week. We had some new members last week. It was fantastic uh, because I'm looking forward to after this primary um, that uh, we're going to be able to kind of dig in. And we've got some major stories to cover uh, as we move into 2018. So if you like what you hear, you want to support Polo No Prunch's progressive media. If you want to make sure that Sean Kitchen is going to be in the Capitol getting access to D. SA people! <laughs> well, you can become a member of Raising Chicken Press. For as little as five bucks a month, just go to patreon.com slash rcpress and choose your membership level. Not ready to become a member? No problem. You can make a one-time donation by going to ragingchickenpress.org. Click on the support and membership tab, click donate, and you're good to go. But really, the what keeps us going are members. Members like you. So become a member, patreon.com slash rcpress, little as five bucks a month, folks. Holy moly, Sean. What a night. What a night. Yeah. Something happened yesterday. I woke up this morning feeling great. I don't know about you. I, I did too as well. But, you know, and I'll tell you, it was, it was a little bit weird. I mean, I, I don't know if you want to call it historic or what. Yeah. Yeah, he says. Well, my thing was, like, you know, I woke up this morning and, you know, I was like, man, I was groggy. got to get my kids off. My folks are coming in because cause we're going away. And so um, so I just you know, turned on the radio. So, you know, it was kind of uh, just listen to the radio. And it was weird. You know what was playing? What? This. <laughs> and I just had to dance around my kitchen. Solidarity forever. The winds were blowing from the west. <laughs> they carried through to Harrisburg. <laughs> there it was, man. And you know what the funny thing was? Tell me. This morning, the first thing I listened to when I got on the computer, Tell I went me. on YouTube and just put on some uh, Pete Seeger, Solidarity Forever. <laughs> there you go. I was just like, all right, it's, that's like morning. Holy moly, where it is. So where do we start, Sean? Where do we start? <laughs> Uh, I guess John Fetterman. Yeah, why not? We'll stop. Uh, we'll stop at the top and move down. Oh, we should say that we had. Uh, you know, uh, um, now we know that Scott Wagner is uh, going to be the the uh, Republican nominee. Um, man, make sure you catch Wolf's first uh, uh, campaign ad. Yeah, it basically, it's a it's a campaign ad. Uh, Sean sent it over to me this morning. It's called "The Worst of Harrisburg," <laughs> and holy moly. Uh, if you had any questions about whether or not the Wolf campaign uh, was going to be uh, showing some uh, mojo, <laughs> holy moly, uh, that was a fantastic lead uh, campaign ad. So we got Wagner over there going against Wolf. But John Fetterman, man, holy moly. John Fetterman coming up with a big, big win. Yes. Um, you know, we were talking about this, something, you know, like, is it? will it happen? Yep. Like, I mean, will he actually do it? And, um, 
he did, and uh, I guess I guess like the overarching theme of tonight, it, last night was like progressive politics can win in Pennsylvania, and progressive Democratic politics just took a hard swing to the left. Yeah, I'll say, and I'll say, and, and, and I mean, I, I think we should just get that out of the way right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, Pennsylvania Democratic Party just took a hard swing to the left. We're gonna pin that to the top of the page, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, Fetterman wins. Uh, pretty much won every county west of Dauphin County. There wasn't anyone like anyone else close to winning out in Western Pennsylvania. Yep. Um, you know, uh, Nina Ahmad has had a really great showing. And no, Fetterman was able to you know scrape away votes in Philadelphia and southeastern PA, and um, you know which where Stack's only base was at. And um, I, I don't think you should be surprised by this because Fetterman had a really great showing in Western Pennsylvania in the Senate primary a couple of years ago. Yeah, and I mean he did it again. Well, I remember you know when when he was running the Senate, I remember interviewing him back then. Um, and you know, one of the questions I had from him is, you know, okay, what, you know, what's, what's next, right? Um, kind of what's after this. And this is, you know, this was early on, earlier on in the process. And, uh, you know, basically he said, look, no matter what happens in this campaign, right, we're going to keep going because it's about, you know, it's about economic revitalization. It's about like unabashed progressive politics. It's about basically all these, um, you know, cities across cities and towns across the state of Pennsylvania who have been just completely left behind um, and ignored, right, and just abandoned. He said they, they feel like they have no voice, right? And then, you know, he used what he did in Braddock, right, um, as basically that launching point in that story, um, about how you actually kind of like, you know, get your hands dirty and, uh, you know, as his slogan was back then, build it back up. Yeah. And I mean, he beat Stack by close to like 100,000 votes. Well, Stack came in fourth. I mean, that that blew my mind. Yeah. Right. I mean, Stack came in fourth. Right. Um, you know, because I, I look at this, I was trying to pull up. I, I think I took a picture of the uh, of the image on oh, maybe It's not going to show up. Uh, it's not going to show up. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I took I well if I find it I'll post it. I took a screenshot of it. Yeah, here it is. So in this, so Stack Stack came in fourth, right behind Ahmad and Kazone, right? That blew my mind. That was what. With so he basically he came in. Uh, Stack had sixteen point six percent of the vote, compared with Kathy Kazone was eighteen point six. Uh, Nina Ahmad at twenty three point seven, and Fetterman thirty seven point five. Um, you know, I think I think there's, there's there's like two stories there. Number one, boom. Yes, progressive politics, unabashed progressive politics are back in Pennsylvania, right? They are. We took a hard swing to the left here, um, and a left that is about kind of ground up people power, right? Um, not kind of like you know just ideological, yeah, not all that kind of crap, yeah. right? Um, but also the what the, the the well, I guess it's three stories. The second one, the fact that you've got Nina Ahmad, so it's a huge, great showing. Right. And she came out and she actually kind of like toppled over kind of like above and beyond um, kind of what Stack did. Right. Exactly. And, you know, she had a good message. She had actually a pretty strong campaign for, um, you know, uh, for like, again, kind of coming out of nowhere. Um, but also it speaks volumes to uh, what's happening to machine politics in the state of Pennsylvania. That whole idea that, you know, you need the kind of conservative Democrats, you need, you know, these machine politics to get stuff done. That just got blown out of the water. Well, you, you want to you, you know how to uh, conservative Democrats? Do tell. It'll cost you a job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was a great joke from the uh, Pittsburgh DSA last night. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> exactly. It'll cost you your job. <laughs> Very good. I have to say, I was thrilled to see uh, Fetterman. Um, I, I don't know if you saw him, him his talk last night at all. Or I did his... not watch his... I, I watched a little bit of it, but I did not watch his... Uh... His full speech. Well, you know, I think he's like, you know, he's hit exactly the right tone of right across the board. I mean, he he came in, he's basically, look, it's not about, you know, kind of gloating or all this other kind of stuff. The first thing he was saying all over Twitter last night was basically like, I can't tell you how touched I am by all the people who came out. I'm how heartened I am. Um, about this campaign. And that was kind of his whole thing. You know, it's about getting down to business and getting things done um, and from a kind of pro unabashed progressive position. So it wasn't just about like, woo, yeah, we won. It was about saying, okay, let's talk about what needs to be done. And one of the things that I really think is going to be interesting is uh, we're going to have a economic progressive, economic populist barnstorming the state for the next 
six months, four four months. Yeah. Just over the next four or five months, just barnstorming the state, and you know, uh, he's going to bring people out to vote. Oh yeah, he's going to be. And you know what? I mean, he- that, that, that's that, that's that, that's the best thing for Wolf right there. I mean. I mean, not only he's going to bring people out to vote, he will probably bring people who will run up the vote. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and, and if Democrats run up the vote, uh, this is probably the worst possible thing for Republicans. Well, yeah, because look, Fetterman has got, look, and his, everything he's done in Braddock, everything about his persona, everything like this, he's the kind of guy, right, is that he's going to be showing up to these towns, right, um, that the Democratic Party has basically abandoned, right, we've been talking about this on the show forever, um, but has been, has abandoned for decades, and he's going to be showing up to these towns, and you know what, you know, the, the, be the first time they've ever seen a politician in these towns for years, probably. Well, a, a politician who's not a right-wing nut job. Yeah. Right. You know, I'd like to see him go and like, like see Daryl Metcalf try to intimidate John Brad Ferdinand, right? you know, like, or Brad Rowe sit to go and like, ah, play the tough guy act with Fetterman and Fetterman's going to like, I'm squishing your head. I'm squishing your head. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> okay, little man. <clears throat> Crazy. But okay. So we got Fetterman right at the top of the ticket. I, I, I still have to say the biggest stories of the night have to do with four DSA candidates uh, making it to the general election. I mean, that's got to be the biggest. Yes, and three of them are going to make it to Harrisburg, regardless of November, because of how heavily... Uh, because, well, because their seats are dem- safe Democratic seats with no Republican opposition. Yeah, exactly. So you've got in Sarah Inamorato, Summer Lee, and Elizabeth Fiedler um, are all on their way, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I don't know about with Kristen Seals. Uh, what do you know about her about uh, about her race? She's going against Chris Quinn, right? Yes, it's going to be in Delaware County, um, sort of like the, I guess the media area of Delaware County. Um, I have not really followed much to the campaign about this, um, but again, a DSA endorsed uh, candidate um, went out one in um, southeastern Pennsylvania in the suburbs of Philadelphia. Yeah, not in Philadelphia, in the suburbs of Philadelphia. <laughs> Like outer suburbs, you know, when you start to get like out towards like more richer areas of Delaware County and all, and it's um, I mean it, it's 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 amazing. Uh, we're, yeah, we're we're seeing the same thing play out here in Pennsylvania that we just that happened in Virginia last year. Yep, where these 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 suburbs are swinging hard to the left. Yeah, it's really and, interesting. And if, yeah, and if I'm a Democrat, if I'm a Republican right now, um, you know, uh. Democrats, you know, just another side story. Democrats just flipped a seat last night that's been held by Republicans for 35 years in a special election. There you go. <laughs> there you in go. In the Philadelphia suburbs, out towards uh, Northampton and Richboro, that part of the Bucks County and Montgomery County line. That's awesome. This is Helen Ty, right? Is that, a, is that the last thing? Yes. <clears throat> yes. But no, like the, with the DSA candidates, uh, biggest story. <laughs> Holy <laughs> moly. Um, it shows you what happens when you put a good campaign together. A, you put a good campaign together against people who haven't been challenged in their whole entire political careers. And you stand for something, maybe? And, and, and you stand for something. <laughs> <laughs> and not just stand for something, stand firm on, um, you know, free public higher education for all Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, health care for all. Um, $15 an hour minimum wage. Um, you know, this completely breaks the traditional norms that uh you know you have to be pro-life pro-gun uh democrat living in these parts of pennsylvania in order to get elected right exactly you well, know this what? well this is yeah. exactly what we talked about last week when i was all pissed off on my union right for going on endorsing the costas well guess what <laughs> you know it was exactly that i mean that was exactly the same kind of logic well you know you're going to need these kind of characters out there and they've done this no, blah, no, blah, blah. no you're not because these seats are safe democratic seats the republicans are not going to run in opposition again regardless how far to the left the candidates are and you know what people like look at look i mean fetterman's not a uh he didn't, he didn't happen by accident like like the like you know the these these elections out in western pennsylvania with some really in sarah and around just happened by accident i mean people are fucking organizing no that's exactly it i mean look we saw what was it and we're was it nick, in, nick Pop, what, pappas what is that his name who, who pappas pappas right who kind of he kind of took over the shit and they, they, like you know this is the kind of this is the kind of thing like that the DSA, been, the pittsburgh dsa just took out three costa family members within the year 
Exactly. And they did it by, and they, here's the, you know, the key thing is, is they did it by not pretending to be something that they're not, they're actually standing for something firm by staking out, like this is, you know, the Jeremy Corbyn thing, right? You know, if you actually stand for something and you're actually offering an alternative, a clear alternative that people actually want. People like. <laughs> Right. They're not going to care. And like, you know, the fact is what the big the big thing was interesting for me, too, as well, is that the whole kind of like, you know, the, you, you see, like only faint whispers of Cold War kind of like 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 rhetoric kind of came through on this one. Like the kind of thing about being an out and out socialist. Right. Saying that, you know, like I'm a Democratic proud member of a Democratic socialist. Right. Um, You know, the the. Even the newspapers and the Republicans the, and the Democrats, they all thought this was going to sink these folks, right? But the fact is, is that people really don't care <laughs> so much anymore. Oh, they you care. support Bernie Sanders? You support Bernie's platform? I mean, he's like, he's the most popular fucking politician in the country right now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And, and you're supporting his platform, like you know what I mean? Like, well, uh, exactly. But I think you know this. But this is the other the other side of what happened in Pittsburgh there too as well, and with and and in Philly, but in particular in Pittsburgh with, with the Costas and Sarah and Amarato and Summer Lee, is that not only do you have not only you know you, I mean you think about this, yes, it's a powerful political family, but this is the the la this is like the the vestiges of the old white guys. Right, yeah. the 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 old way of doing stuff. Well, uh, like Sarah and Murado and Summer Lee. Summer Lee, the first, as you've been saying, right, the first African American Afri woman from Western Pennsylvania, period, to ever be elected to the Pennsylvania State House. Exactly right. I mean, the first African American woman west of like Harrisburg. Exactly, and so I mean, this is huge. I mean, this this represents a sea I mean, change. Not, yeah, and it's not like we are, we're not eating our own, you know, like. You know, we are we are improving upon our own. Yeah, we're getting we're, we are taking out people who should who have ran their course and we're replacing them. And, you know, people are like, oh, well, it's just Democrats eating their own last night uh, <laughs> is getting the first black woman west of Harrisburg ever elected to state office eating your own. Right. That's it shows you last ceiling. again. It, well, it shows you like the fact the fact that like. <sighs> You look at the districts that that you look at the districts that they won in, right? They haven't looked; those districts have not looked like the Costas in a long time, <laughs> right? No, they haven't. And this has been, again, this has been part of the problem of the Democratic Party, and frankly, it's one of the been the problems that that labor has been slow to kind of get a move on, right? It's been a slow to kind of say, hey, look, you know. Uh, <laughs> We need to kind of be kind of thinking about um, kind of where the edge, where that leading edge of kind of of labor and politics are. We need to get on the leading edge of kind of and saying, look, you know, things the like the search of union members now are coming from young female millennials. Exactly. And more and, and more so kind of uh, kind of minority um, women than anything else. Right. I mean, especially with an SCIU and the service sectors and things like I mean, these this is kind of, you know, no duh. Right. And the fact is, is that the fact that now I think what hurt the Costas a lot are kind of like they're kind of like they're wavering on um, on abortion rights. Right. Um, I, the fact that that was kind of like hurt them huge. Like, well, you know, I don't know what to say. You're going to you're going to kind of vote for a 20 week abortion ban. You know what? Maybe we don't need you around anymore, especially since we got a woman over here who's going to come out and say, like, nope, <laughs> I'm going to make sure that, that this right is defended and we're going to work for. Um, free health care and we're going to work for free college tuition and we're going to kind of make sure that our communities are revitalized from the ground up and we're going to find alternative energy policies. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm still in shock over it. Yeah. But it, it, <laughs> I think like bigger picture, I, it's amazing the national press um, that has been flooding into these two races, especially with Summer Lee over the past couple of days. Yeah. Uh, the New Yorker ran like a 2,000 word profile pretty much on her race, which was absolutely phenomenal. It is. Um, the uh, Mother Jones picked up on this uh, race, these two races, a couple days ago. Um, on Monday, they published a profile. Um, you know, I was, t I was hearing whispers that the Costas were pretty much preparing to lose uh, going into Tuesday's election. You know, in Harrisburg, Sean's um, part of the Whisper Network. <laughs> yes, I am part of. Yeah, the shit I get, it, it's legit. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And then, um, I mean, like, and now, like, the Daily Beast and other national left publications are like, "Holy shit, DSA just kicked ass in Pennsylvania." Yep. There you go. And it's gonna be fun seeing um, 
how the DSA advances and also where this brings um, the future of the Democratic Party in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things, we, you know, we talked about on Friday um, in our last show is um, this is a perfect example. So for the longest time, the Democratic Party has done everything, everything in its uh, power to basically make sure that there were, you know, um, well, actually, Democrat and Republican Party, make sure that, you know, they do- those two parties dominated everything and kept third party candidates out. And so, so you know, if you want to play, you got to come into our party. Well, OK, here you go. And um, we're going to play by your rules, and they come in. And what was interesting, I saw several tweets last night and again this morning um, where it basically said, you know, there were people kind of um, tweeting tweeting stuff out saying, okay, um, f- we're still waiting for, you know, the, I know that there's your you, those you guys out there that are still saying that, um, you know, you're not going to play, you're not going to play with the Democratic Party, you know, you're not going to be part of the system and all that. Well, maybe take a look at this and maybe because now is a good time to come on into the Democratic Party um, because we're actually kind of expanding out what this what this party can mean. Yeah, The Hill just published a story. Four socialist back candidates with Pennsylvania win Pennsylvania legislative primaries. <clears throat> unreal, unreal. Yeah, <laughs> and it you know, and good I th- being the center of attention. Yeah, well, I, you know, I think that you know, positive. well, and this this should be you know, we've talked about this on the show before about some of the things that DSA has been doing. Um, you know, one of the things that that is, has marked out, and from my perspective, as someone who's been around socialist politics for a long time, right? Because I'm old now, um, is that. I, I, most of my my experience with socialist politics um, up in, you know, for because the, the, the majority of my life, it, there was much more about ideological arguments, right? About people making ideological arguments about, you know, this, this is what, you know, what capitalism, we should, how we understand this. And, and all that stuff is super, super important. I get it, right? But what the DSA has been doing, um, especially, you know, around, you know, given the Bernie Sanders campaign um, and kind of the heels of that, is they've been organizing locally, locally around real issues, right? Yes, and community engagement and community involvement. Exactly. And so instead of it being about kind of like, we're just going to have these arguments over socialism and communism or, you know, socialism and capitalism, right? Um, what we're going to do is that we're going to put those values to work. Right. Um, and we're going to do that by establishing community, kind of arguing for the kind of things that um, that, you know, that we're supporting. Right. So, you know, single payer health care, all this kind of stuff. And that's been so incredibly impressive. So as much as that, you even see these sniping from the press at times, but they want to kind of like try to do the red bait stuff. The people on the ground in these districts aren't being sitting like sitting around listening to kind of you know kind of long lectures about socialism right and why it is kind of like how it kind of we understand use value and exchange value and capitalism no they're talking about like what are the things that we 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 want right and then how do we get it well we do it by organizing and collectively Right. You know, and again, I, I, I hate to dra- draw it back too far, but if when we get into the, you know, look for the, 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 the beginning of this kind of wave, right? If you look at like the Occupy movement, right, that really gave us the, the language of like the 1% and the 99%. Right. Um, For everybody who talks about how Occupy failed and there's a lot of there was a lot of failings. There's no doubt about it. Right. But one of the things you can never, ever forget is about how Occupy helped change the discourse that allowed us to get where we are today. I, you know, I was thinking about that same exact thing this morning, Um, how much Occupy, you know, had the few months it was around, you know, and as a mass protest, how much that has changed. It's changed discourse. And this is an exact result of it. Like without Occupy or Wisconsin, um, I don't think Bernie Sanders runs for president in 2016. You know, I don't think Elizabeth Warren does what she's doing. I don't think that, and I don't think the DSA is is at where it's at. Yep. I mean, we are, I mean, like, this is, I wouldn't say there's a, the DSA is not bringing mainstream socialist ideas back into the Democratic Party. They are bringing ideas that were around in the 1920s and 1930s within the New Deal. Exactly. And that's the that's I the mean, crazy thing. Right. It's like I mean, you've you've said this a thousand times over. Right. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, I'm a New Deal Democrat. <laughs> right. And if you want if that DSA, right, DSA if that DSA makes me a Democratic socialist, sure, whatever, man. <laughs> but at one time, DSA you're talking about that platform. Yeah. And it's basically and, you know, again, it's like and I would even say is like this is where DSA is, has really been successful. Right. And, I, you know, she got to give other so, um, socialist groups kind of some some kudos here, too, as well. I mean, you know, social alternative has done kind of amazing stuff down in Philadelphia. You've got um, 
Uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, there's been a, kind of a whole rebirth around this and, and, and very similar kinds of dynamic. Um, DSA just happens to have, the, have been where people have consolidated like around. People, what's that? Where, where the people fl- flock to. Yeah, I mean, I think that, in, you know, in part because, you know, Bernie Sanders gave us that language, right? I'm a democratic socialist. So then, you know, here you go. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to say, you know, th- that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going <laughs> to shut up. <laughs> I know. Also, um, you know, like the, yeah, I, I forget. I, forget I was, I was going to say something else. <laughs> we just, uh, everybody, we're going to pause for a minute. Um, we just both had a little brain fart. So, um <laughs> We're just going to treat you to a little bit of uh, this. <laughs> but no, what else I also was going to say yeah. is that you know these are also bringing millennial issues to the forefront. Yes. And I had a conversation with someone at the bar the other night, a neighbor of mine, and he said the kids are taking over. He's like that old, the way the old white guard is, you know, exactly what we were saying earlier. He's like kids, like most of the kids these days don't like know what like don't accept like misogyny in the workplace wouldn't do half the shit these old right. white people power would do and i feel like there's a yes there's definitely a generational divide there and he's like but also it's like the young kids are also like like how many how, how many of them travel to europe and stuff like that you know and have been traveling to places their home to, or going to places or have, have had the opportunity to go to places that have these policies implemented right and we're like wow the country is not falling apart like the fucking fear mongers say it would well you know and i think but you know again and, and, you, you but can't they realize that it's like there's so much more out there and there's more opportunity right but it also has a lot to do with experience too right i mean it has to do with you see the fact that you've got concrete examples where we are college tuition is paid for and you've got free access to health care and the the roads are paved and like you know People aren't like solar you know, panels on eighty percent of the roofs. Exactly, the you're seeing the uh, concrete examples. At the same time, you're talking about historic levels of college debt, right? You're seeing it about where you have an economy that works. You know, is basically you know is, is like you know the race for the bottom is what we've brought home here and like in the U.S. is that you have a concentration of wealth um, that we've never seen before, right? Um, and so people are living through this too as well. I mean, it's not just like they're seeing examples. Oh, I think I'd like that too. No, it's like those things shows you concrete examples of that can be done at the same time that we're, you know, this has been a 30 year assault, right? On, on labor rights, on environmental rights, right? Um, and I think that you finally got, you know, a generation that has kind of it, it been through that long enough and now has a voice and thank God that um, they're stepping up and kind of taking over. Um, because, because I, I do think that's what it's going to take. You know, I do think it's going to take like, you know, uh, you know, Rachel Maddow last night was basically talking about right at the end of her show says, look at the Pennsylvania contingent says something interesting is happening here. Um, I said, I want to show you the picture of the Pennsylvania delegation, which you've talked about this, you know, um, over and over and talk about the executive branch, all white, well, one African American, I think, but almost uh, every single one of them is male, right? All of them are older, vast majority of them white. Right. At the very least, that's got to end. <laughs> right. And uh, we just took um, some really. I know. Like, yeah. Um, moving on, like some of the congressional primary races. Yeah. Um, the Madeline Dean. Whoops. <laughs> wins. Outright. <laughs> Outright. <laughs> um, you know, you have Mary Gay Scanlon, um, who surprised people and won. Um, she's a Ballard Spar lawyer. She's involved with some of the alternative schools in Philadelphia um, that have public-private partnerships. And Ballard Spar is also known as for uh, union-busting practices and cozying up the Comcast. And they, she beat um, Richard Glazer, who was the Johnny Doc um, candidate and who's also supported by Bernie Sanders. Um, and progressives were really up, were really pissed at Bernie for backing Glazer uh, when there was many more female candidates um in in that race yeah is that the, that's the race molly sheehan was in too right yes yeah yes that was the pennsylvania fifth um greg edwards did not win last night yeah that was uh definitely had to talk about this because uh that was that was my one of my biggest disappointments um uh, of last night um but i think the i mean also manny guzman friend of ours he didn't he did not win last night against cal de Drone. And Which, maybe it's just it, it's just that that it's still changing. It's not there yet. The Lehigh Valley. 
Well, I, I think that's the that I think that's really the the, the takeaway. And like, yeah, I know. Look, I mean, Manny's gonna Manny's gonna keep his nose to the grindstone and kind of continue to uh, continue I mean, to work and run. Votes. I know plenty of state reps who have who lost the who lost their first primary by like that much or a few hundred votes and won the next one handedly. Yeah. Well, I think you know. Look, I mean, things are not going to get any better for Cal Cal. I can never say his name. Cal Yeah. Be, um, I mean, after he's. I mean, he, the fact that first of all, the fact that people voted for a guy who's got like sexual harassment and batteries, you know, that kind of stuff is just, I, I, that blows my mind, but whatever, yeah. and, you know, and I think that, you know, I, w- I was thinking a lot about the, um, uh, well, first of all, we should say the positive end of, of what happened in the PA seventh, right? Yes. Greg Edwards didn't take it, which is, you know, I was really pulling for Greg Edwards. Um, but, um, uh, Susan Wilde did get elected and Morgan Ellie did not. <laughs> right? Yes. I mean, uh, it, it was. I, I there was a moment last night which I was like, "Oh my god!" Like some of the early returns came out in strong Morganelli um, areas, and so there was like this. You know, I, I always saw it first was the graph with Morganelli with you know like sixty three percent. I was like, "Oh my god!" You can't tell me that this is going on. So that didn't happen. That's good, yes. right? And we're talking about sending another woman, right? You know, I'm good. She got to go through the general, um, but you know, putting another woman for which is fantastic, um, and you know, I. I I've been thinking a lot about like, well, what what happened with the Edwards campaign? It's like, well, if you looked at some of the voter turnout um, in the area, like you know, in, in like Lehigh County had some of the had really low turnout, right? Where Northampton County had had higher turnout, and um, so some of the kind of like you know the the urban areas in in uh, in Allentown and and Bethlehem, um, you know, I, I think we're in the middle of a of that sea change of being able to kind of construct a political identity right because people just aren't connected in that way i think is 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 part of what's come out of that so and susan wilde does have some issues with herself um she supported the police officers uh with that um uh police brutality uh case right cop kicking a um puerto rican man in the face while he was on the ground uh a few months back came out and supported the police officers involved with that she's not she's not gonna be the best democrat but she's better than than Morganelli, and she's going to be pushed on the issues. And I, I don't expect her to make them waves, but I mean, I feel like she's also a reflection of that that area that's changing. Yeah, I think that's I, I think that's right, and I think that um, you know I'm I'm just gonna I'm just you know, look. I mean, Greg Edwards has been doing organizing I say for she's decades. A old Democrat by any means. No, 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 no. She's she's kind of more in the kind of the the, the she's more in the kind of centrist traditions, right? I mean, she's kind of more in the kind of Hillary Clinton kind of middle of the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, um, but, uh, you know, thank God Morganelli didn't get it. That's the good thing. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank God. Yeah. So cool. So what, I mean, let me ask you this. So, I mean, you also put in here about, about Helen Ty. What do you know about her in, um, and, and her race? I do not know anything about Helen Ty. <laughs> mm-hmm. She was, uh, picked for a, um, special election. Um, that was Scott Pruitt's seat. Uh, Pruitt left Philadelphia, uh, left to, uh, run the Philadelphia parking authority. And this was a special election that was scheduled uh, on the, the this night. Um, the, the, this seat in this district in the, has been held by Republicans for 35 years, and they lost it last night by like a 51-48 margin. That pretty amazing, man. Pretty amazing. And um, they, the two candidates, one they both won their primaries, and they'll both be facing off against each other again uh, in the November general election. Um, you know that with uh, what happened with DSA candidates, uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia County, the Philadelphia area Republicans, uh, are got about to be put on the extinction list. Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. I mean, so if, if you think about it like this, you know, if you got the, uh, um, I, I was just thinking about last night, it was like, there's a different kind of red coming. Right? <laughs> so, it's like, uh, so it's uh, pushing out the Republicans, right? Uh, and there you go. Yeah, I mean, it's, go. yep. So uh, that that happened last night. Well, uh, we do we do have to say that um, we do we do have to have a, a say a sad farewell um, to someone near and dear to our hearts here at the program. Yes. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, the godly heritage did not carry Rick Sacone, uh to electoral victory out in Western Pennsylvania. Womp, this is the womp, second time womp. he's lost an election in less than two months. <laughs> <laughs> second time in two months that he lost an election. And uh, um, he'll have to take his uh, waterboarding tail. 
and the free meal he gets from lobbyists <laughs> somewhere else. Maybe they could freeze dry those 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 steak dinners on Second Street and send uh, Rick Sacone and his wife uh, some um, some free steaks since he loves to run up the lobbyist tab while he's out to dinner with them. There you go. <laughs> See ya, Rick Sacone. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, <laughs> bye bye. I still one of my favorite moments in the history of Rick Sacone. Well, I mean, other than the you know the, the video that you got of him with the godly heritage stuff, which was just like priceless. Um, but was when uh, uh, Ivanka Trump came out to campaign for him, right? Um, and she's like, you could see him kind of on stage, and she kind of like licks over to him at one point, glances over, it, and you could like almost read on her face. She's like, really, this guy. This guy, I'm supporting this guy, <laughs> and he looked up there like a muppet, <laughs> you know. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> so man, and he only spends like one minute at the podium and then lets Trump talk for 45. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was probably a safe, safer bet for him than than actually talking himself. So that's good. <clears throat> so, uh, it's funny, it's, I'm, I'm gonna be upset not seeing him around in the Capitol anymore. Uh, like you know, threatening to waterboard people. Oh, he'll just he'll some lobbyist still kind of start, start throwing him some money. Some far right wing people. He'll be around. Don't uh, worry. I don't think he's getting a job in Harrisburg. <laughs> I don't think he's getting a job in Harrisburg. But uh, some some of those give him some money to kind of keep you know keep the red meat going. I bet. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Um, so on the uh, Republican side of things, like we said, Wagner. Um, so now you got kind of Wagner. Clearly, um, he's the nominee. And you know, uh, one thing about that—it was a really close primary for Wagner. Uh, yeah, yeah. If we're, I mean, uh, if we're beating the shit out of each other, he won that by like not slim margins, but a little closer than you you would expect. Than you'd expect, yeah. For someone who's had the party support uh, since he announced in January 2018. Well, I was I was surprised out here in Bucks County um like and even up up up, up in Lehigh, I was surprised to see there were uh, lots of mango signs out. Um and yeah. and few Wagner ones, which was interesting. And Mango actually kind of had a billboard campaign going on 476 early, way early. So that was just kind of just kind of interesting to see how that was going to shake itself out. Um Yeah. But we also get the anti-immigrant dude Lou Barletta. Lou Barletta. <laughs> yep, going up against Casey. Yep, that'll oh, be fun. Oh, man. I cannot wait for this. <laughs> like, you have two of the most uninspiring, really horrible candidates on the top of your ticket at the Republican yep. side. Barletta yep. and Wagner. Racist, violent, misogynist. <laughs> yep, check have all the fantasies, boxes. <laughs> fantasies about shooting people. Yep, just like, go right through and check all the boxes. Uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, makes racist comments about people working for minimum wage. Like, oh, just check off all the all, everything, and it's going to be fun uh, watching Fetterman just barnstorm the state. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, man, huge, huge night, um, huge night. Anything else uh, we got to kind of uh, touch base on before? <laughs> um. No, not nothing really. Go out and keep the celebration going. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, everybody, this is a uh, um, huge, huge night. Um, last night, um, you know, again, takeaways are, you know, we see a nice left turn uh, taking place in uh, parts of the Democratic Party, um, especially out in the West. Uh, we've got John Fetterman, who's going to be, uh, again, uh, leading the message on um, kind of economic revitalization and uh, going to bring all people in. And, you know, I, I have to say is that, you know, um, his wife, too, as well, the work that she does um, kind of, you know, kind of in the community, kind of um, kind of building community and things like this is going to be also huge because those two together are a powerhouse team. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. So and then, um, um, mm-hmm. one, one last thing I want to tell you. Yeah. Uh, in case in case you didn't know. The next governor is going to be from your county. Oh, my God, Sean. Say it isn't so. Wait, what kind of muckraking journalism got to that? <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was really working working it late last night. <laughs> Biggest hot take of the PA primary. The next governor. I mean, just dis- totally disregard everything we just said over the past half hour <laughs> and go away knowing that the next governor is going to be from your county. Yep, yep. 
Headlines, Pen Live, everybody. <laughs> pen Live. <laughs> You gotta love that. You gotta love I'm that. I get so in trouble for that. <laughs> That's a, that, well, whatever. It's a, it's the uh, it's the it is the big takeaway, everybody. The big takeaway. <laughs> yeah, Next governor's gonna be just, Fever just County. Disregard and forget everything we said over the past half hour. And yeah, how do we say something that is so vanilla that it makes vanilla look bland? You know, <laughs> you know, it's like whatever. Oh man. All right. Well, hey, uh, this has been our short take uh, post primary. Um, for a special out to coop. Um, like I said, we will not have a regular show this Friday, um, but we will be back next week um, to uh, kind of to bring it. Um, and I think, look, I, 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 I'm just I'm excited to be honest with you about the seeing what starts happening now in terms of like the coverage of the stories um, kind of next week. Cause right now it's just been, wow, this is huge. And then to see what's how they start kind of rolling out their campaigns for the general election is going to be really, really awesome. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how everyone up here in Harrisburg reacts to um, having three yeah. DSA members go, getting elected and potentially having a fourth up here. Um, yeah. And guess right what? There, and and lots of women going to be joining them there. So we're going to boot out the old white guys, right, and in yeah. with the new. Yeah. Uh, all four of these DSA candidates are also all women, obviously. Um, you know, the yeah, it's <laughs> four socialists. It's going to be funny watching how the Democratic establishment and the Democratic leadership is going to be talking about this because they're going to be in for rude awakening. Yeah, well, I wonder if they're, they're going to get the uh, red carpet from uh, Jay Costa. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Sean keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. I will say one thing. Um, is is the is the word socialist in the Costa vernacular yet? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> they're coming for you next, Jay. <laughs> no. Um, Nick, He's a really good senator. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like, no, no, he's actually a good senator. <laughs> it's a good, no, good. All right. Well, so we're going to call it, we're going to call it here, folks. Um, and uh, I, I hope that you're as thrilled about the results last night as well. Um, even if we, we didn't get the, uh, the Greg Edwards uh, seat last night um, and some other folks that um, walked out. I, I, one thing I didn't mention here, we got Scott Wallace um, down here in Bucks County is going to be going up against um uh, Fitzgerald, Brian's Fitzgerald um, in the fall. That was a, a three-way race, and uh, it was kind of pretty tight between uh, Wallace and uh, Rachel Reddick. Um, Rachel Reddick came up a little short on that one. Um, it was a very that was a very I should I, I should have brought this up earlier. Sorry, it was a very kind of weird race in some ways um, because they they were uh, Reddick and Wallace were going after each other pretty hard in the end there. Um, and, uh, Wallace came in, you know, he's a kind of millionaire financier guy, kind of guy came in from DC, kind of run back for this, the, um, the seat, uh, Reddick was, um, uh, you know, she was in the Navy and she had been in DC too, but she'd been there because she was in the Navy, you know, and then had come back in. It was a really kind of interesting campaign. And then Steve Bacher, who came in with, uh, who was a former environmental, um, um, worked for the EPA for under Obama for a bit. Uh, he came in with some really kind of strong progressive credentials, but his, his campaign didn't, didn't kind of catch in some of the ways that the, the Wallace and Reddick, um, campaigns caught, but, um, he did fairly well too, as well. But Steve Wallace, um, again, someone who, who's been at least mouthing the uh, the progressive agenda is going to be headed forward to as well. So we'll see how that works out. All right, man. So, uh, hey, enjoy the rest of the week and uh, bask in the glory of, uh, you know, our little friend Pete Seeger. What do you say? <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to myself Friday. I'm not recording the podcast. <laughs> there you go. There it is. All right. Well, this is Kev Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. Uh, um, congratulations to all the um, winners out there. Special kudos to um, all the DSA, DSA back folks. Um, we will be back next week um, with more a follow up, and plus we'll get back into more of our kind of our regular routine here with the uh, looking at some of the national and state news. Um, but holy moly, what a night! This is Kevin Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. Thanks for all for tuning in. We remind you, patreon.com slash rcpress. Become a member. See ya!